Welcome everyone, so I just want to show you the racial changes that are coming up with Shadow of the Hist DLC. There are a few really interesting changes and some of the weaker races finally got really really cool buffs. I really like what they have done. There needs to be a few small adjustments but in general it's really cool. Anyway, let's get started. For Bretons basically all the stuff stays the same, the only thing that changed is that they get 1% extra alliance points. Which is really underwhelming, I really would suggest that Zenimax gives them like a 3% extra magic damage passive. Because then they actually could compete with High Elves and Dark Elves, which would be really cool. High Elves didn't really get any buff, like the only thing that changed is that they get 1% more XP. All the other things are the same, 9% Magicka Recovery, 10% Magicka and 4% Elemental Damage. I really don't think they need a buff because they are already really strong. So I'm fine with this. Argonians, so they really changed Argonians around, so they're basically now the strongest healing race because they get increases your healing done by 9%. It was before it only worked on yourself, the extra healing, but now it works on everybody around you. So this passive is really freaking strong. This one basically stays the same. And then here, in addition to the 12% extra health, magic and stamina from potions, you also get 3% extra magicka. Really, really cool. So, Argonians are the best healing race now, more or less. So, I, I really love the changes. They are finally good. And most important, the swim speed is still here. I mean, what else for would you make Argonian, right? Anyway, let's move on. Orcs. So, basically, they get 10% more crafting inspiration. Who cares, right? Then max health, max stem, still the same. Here, the health recovery used to be 30%, now it's 20%, but you also get increases your healing received. I think that's new. So, pretty cool. Health recovery, not really that important, in my opinion, but the extra healing, cool shit. And still, that stays the same. So, Orc didn't really get any changes, but I also think they don't really need any changes. So, I'm fine with that. Wood Elves basically also stay the same, nothing got changed here, the only change they got is that they get 10% less fall damage. So, I mean, I guess it's fine like it is, maybe they could have gotten them like 6% increased max stamina, but as the 21% standard recovery is really strong, I, I'm really fine that they didn't buff those anymore, so... Yeah, let's move on. So Dark Elves, 50% less damage from Lava. I guess it's nice to have. Then this is the same, same. And the other change here is, in addition to the 7% Flame damage, you also get 2% extra Frost and Shock damage. I like the change. It doesn't make them too OP because Dark Elves are already really strong. With their 9% extra magicka, more stamina, more fire damage. So I really think this class is balanced really well. For the red guards really everything stays the same except this one here, Wayfarer. So it increases the duration of any eaten food by 15 minutes. I think... Like, the red guards don't need any buff because the Adrenaline Rush is really strong. And if they would buff them even more, they would get even stronger. So I think it's totally fine where they are right now. It's still my favorite race to go to because of the sustain. Now, Kashids. So that's where shit gets serious. This still the same. Then, basically, so what they did is they kind of buffed the already strongest PvE DPS class even further so they removed the health recovery but they gave them 6% max stamina in addition to the 10% stamina recovery 
So that is really strong. Like, I'm really not sure why they buffed them. Because the weapon crit 8% is really freaking strong. So now basically, it's... If you, especially in PvE, in PvP, I think Redguard is still a little bit better, but PvE-wise, you really want to have a Kashyyyk, because the extra damage you get from 8% weapon critical and 6% extra stamina is insane. I, re I think it's a little bit over the top, but whatever, we will see. And yeah, they get 5% increased chance on pickpocket. So for Nords, basically... The only thing that changed is the 6% extra max stamina. Is it enough? I'm not sure. I, I like the change, but I still don't think that they can compete with other races. I would like that Senimax gives them a weaker version of the Adrenaline Rush passive. We all know Adrenaline Rush, rush passive like gives you 3% of your max stamina every 3 seconds back if you do damage and I would like to give them like 1% stamina which would be I think still quite cool because they have other passives like damage reduction and stuff like that so I think it would be a cool improvement and then they finally could be comparable to other tanking classes and they also, of course, get 15 minutes more time on drinks. For Imperials, basically, everything is the same, except the Diplomat passive, you get 1% more gold. I don't think Imperials need a buff, because they have 10% more stem and 12% more health, so I think they are still completely fine and can compete with other races. So I really like that they didn't get buffed. So that's already it. I really like what they have done with the racial passives. The weaker races finally got buffed. So I really love it. Again, this is just the first week of the PTS. So there might be a few small changes till the last week. But I think it's kind of solid like this. Anyway, I don't want to make the video longer. If you have any questions, ask me in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Cheers.